Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining us on our Amazon Lit YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to talk about standard global identifiers. Now what is a standard global identifier? You're gonna to have to watch the video to find out. A lot of this information will blow your mind. You see these numbers every day and you probably had no idea what they mean. So smash that play button, click that subscribe button, and enjoy. Welcome to the YouTube channel for Amazon Lit, where we pump out a ton of content for e-commerce sellers and really anybody trying to grow a business. And we talk about how to reach out to distributors, how to navigate the marketplaces, how to build a business, how to hire employees, how to fire employees, how to rent space, you know, how to outsource tasks how to manage people, how to manage your inventory, how to make sure that your profits are supporting your expenses and your net profits are as high as humanly possible. The topics we discuss on this channel are tremendous and endless and they just keep going and going. The knowledge we have gained and the experience we have gained over the last six years selling on Amazon.com have really opened my mind to a whole new spectrum of ideas that can not only continue to help us grow, but can help you grow as well. So today we're gonna to talk about standard global identifiers. Standard global identifiers, also known as UPCs, GTINs, EANs, they enable products to be sold and reordered and tracked through a supply chain, right? So the first standard global identifier we're gonna talk about is a UPC, which is a universal product code, and it's also called the GTIN 12. All right, so you may be asking yourself, why do I need to know about these? Because number one, every single product in the world is produced with one of these numbers on it. It's a way to track the goods as they are sold and reordered. So it's important to understand what each of these numbers mean. So if you receive an Excel file from a wholesaler or distributor and you get a catalog with 13 digits instead of 14 digits or 14 digits instead of 12 digits, whatever digit you're expecting is not the digit you receive, you'll know exactly what those digits are and it'll make your job much easier figuring out how to place that order or when you contact the distributor to ask them if they could send it a different way, you know the terminology that they're referring to so you don't sound like you have no idea what you're talking about. The first standard global identifier we will discuss is a UPC or a GTIN 12. A UPC can be found on any product, primarily in North America, so primarily manufactured in North America. The UPC can be found on that product. It's 12 digits long and there's an equation for getting this product. So the first six to nine digits are company prefix assigned by GS1. Now GS1, they essentially have a monopoly on the UPC industry. They're a nonprofit organization that creates UPC codes and any UPC code is, is created by GS1. The next set of numbers are assigned by the company so the first six to nine digits are assigned by GS1, and then the next couple numbers, excluding the last digit, are assigned by the company based on how they want to track that product internally. And then the last digit is a check digit, which is yielded from a mathematical equation based on the first 11 digits. And why is it important to know these numbers and why they exist in the format that they do? Like you may be saying to yourself, Eric, I just need to know that it's a 12 digit number, a UPC or a G1012 is a 12 digit number. And I can get what you're saying there, but I always wanna know more, right? And what made me wanna know more is when I started receiving files with only 11 digits in them. Some of our distributors, some of our largest distributors send us files with only 11 digits. So I had to figure out why is a digit missing? And then I learned that the check digit was missing. And now the check digit can be calculated. 
and it's available on Google, there's check digit calculators that will actually figure out what that check digit is because they run it through the GS1 database, the, the company that has a monopoly on UPC codes across the world. They run those, those first 11 digits through their database and they're able to generate the check digit because it's a mathematical equation based on the first 11 digits. So if you get a product catalog with only 11 digits in the UPC column, either the Excel file is not formatted properly and it's missing the first zero, or the check digit's missing, and then you have an easy solution. You can run that UPC through a check digit calculator and it will generate the 12 digit UPC. So another standard global identifier is a GTIN 8, which is an eight digit number and it's predominantly used outside of the United States. Where I usually see GTIN 8 is on really small makeup products like lipsticks, eyeliners. Those are the places I usually see a GTIN 8 and it's a, no different than a GTIN 12 except it's four digits left, but it's used as the same thing. It's used as a license plate to track it through the supply chain and you're not going to get any information to populate on Amazon if you're searching by a GTIN 8. Now there are calculators that can figure out what that 12 digit um, GTIN 8 correlates to and you can plug that in Google and figure that out. So the next standard global identifier we're going to talk about is a GTIN 14. So a GTIN 14 is primarily used in North America and it's used to identify trade items at various packaging levels. So a GTIN 14, back to this ClearSill product, we got the GTIN 12 also known as the UPC, the Universal Product Code. And then on the case, we have a GTIN 14, which is 14 digits long. Now incorporated in this 14 digit long number are the same exact numbers that are in this UPC code. Right, so this UPC code for this product is 83997, and right here in the GTIN 14 is 83997, and then 00804, 00804. And now the only number that's different is the check digit. The check digit for the G1012 or UPC code is three. And here the last digit is zero. And at the beginning, a one was added. So this is a G1014, also known as a case UPC. And G1014s are used to track trade items at various packaging levels. And the purpose of the G1014, or case UPC, is so when this case is received at a fulfillment center, or a warehouse, or a transfer facility, they can scan this case UPC and know exactly what this product is. It's an alternate way to track inventory without having to open it and actually scan the universal product code, or G1012. So the last standard global identifier we're going to talk about is a G1013 or an EAN number, which is a, a European article number. And European article numbers are 13 digits long and they're used primarily outside of the United States. So you're going to come into some situations where you may get a catalog from a wholesaler distributor and all of the codes are 13 digits long and you're going to say to yourself, wow, these are these are interesting UPC codes. I know there can be 11 because of the check digit, but what happens if I have a 13 digit UPC? What do I do with that? So the 13 digit UPC indicates that it was manufactured outside of North America. And it's very common to get personal care or health and beauty products that have EAN numbers and it's a lot of the name brand products that you can find in the United States like Dove or Olay and they will come in milliliters opposed to ounces and that's a good indication to know if you're dealing with an EAN number versus a UPC or a GTIN that's missing a number is, is the measurement that the actual volume is measured in. If it's in milliliters 
opposed to ounces, then most likely that 13 digit number you're looking at is a European article number, an EAN number, and it was manufactured outside of the United States. So back to my point, you will run into some situations where you get a catalog sent to you and it has all EAN numbers in it and you're gonna be like, wow, these prices are really low. And you're gonna start looking on Amazon and you may find the equivalent product, the UPC will not match, but you may do the math on the milliliter to ounce conversion and you'll be like, wow, this 100 milliliter matches up to this whatever ounce product this is, maybe I could sell it under this listing. And now can you sell it under this listing? Sometimes you can, but a lot of times Amazon is going to remove those units because it doesn't match the listing exactly. Even if the ounces to milliliter conversion matches up perfectly, Amazon wants to ensure because they're a customer based business that the products that are being offered on their marketplace are exactly as advertised. So if you're advertising a product that's in ounces and you ship to the customer a product that's in milliliters, Amazon does not appreciate that and there's a very high chance that they will remove your listing. Does it always happen? No, but does it happen? Yes. So it's something to be mindful of. So those products from other than North America, they're usually priced a little lower because they've made it into the United States, probably from some sort of diverter, and they've made it here, and now people are trying to move that inventory. We work with a liquidator who frequently sells me. It's The liquidator is actually only about a half hour from our, from our warehouse, and she frequently sends me catalogs from that warehouse facility that have EAN numbers and I always look at them. I always look at them because there might be a great deal in there where I can get one unit and get, you know, five, six, seven thousand units of that product or one order and get five, six, seven thousand units of that product because it's just priced so low that I don't want to pass up on that deal. So you definitely still want to be looking at EANs and you want to be looking at GTINs. If it's missing a number and the GTIN 12 or UPC has 11 digits versus 12, you use your check digit calculator because the last thing you want to do is start emailing the manufacturer, the distributor, the brand, whoever sent you that catalog and start asking a million questions. You want to troubleshoot the problem yourself because because if you can figure out yourself, it will save you time to submitting the emails. It will save the person you're emailing the stress and time of responding and figuring out what the issue you have is. And it's just better all around. And it makes you more self-sufficient, self-sustainable. And it makes it easier for you to grow your business. Because now, if a buyer, you hire a buyer and they run into the issue, you don't have to be like, okay, I don't know what that is. Email the wholesaler or distributor. You can explain to them exactly what that means. Like, hey, this is an 11 digit UPC. It's missing the check digit. Run it through a check digit calculator and it will generate that last digit. Or hey, this is a 13 digit number. It's an EAN. It's a European article number. It means it's manufactured outside of North America, but still check these products on Amazon because there might be some great opportunities. Or hey, this is a G10. It's a 14 digit case identifier and it's used to track various packaging levels of this product but we could still generate a upc from this item so let's roll with it so if you have any more questions about the topics discussed in this video talking about standard global identifiers that we didn't answer you can always click the link below and schedule the personalized one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with either sebastian or myself where we can really dive deep into some of these topics and further explain them in detail so you have a firm grasp of exactly what it is we're talking about. We're so grateful to have you watching this channel. Super grateful to have you joining us on this journey to well over $200 million sold on amazon.com. We just passed the $100 million mark, so we're halfway there. It's a huge milestone for us. Thank you, stay motivated, stay grateful, stay hustling, and stay lit.